is the Kona Electric. It's Hyundai's first fully electric SUV. Now, before I came to review it, I asked you in a YouTube poll what you most wanted to know about it. The results, the results were interesting. That's it there, including my typo. Now, 26% of you said the one thing you wanted to know most about it was how much it costs. 15% of you said you most wanted to know about its features. 40% said you wanted to know what its range was on a full charge. 10% said you wanted to know what it was like to drive. And 7% of you said you just wanted to know about its practicality. Somebody also wanted to know how many Richard Berries the Kona Electric had lost in terms of plastic cladding. I don't know how to measure that. So the things you most want to know about the Hyundai Kona Electric are how much, how far, and what get. I could answer those. Let's go. So if you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au and hit like. See that one little there, that little guy there? Hit him, press him, don't hit him, just press him. And subscribe, you know, it's, it's free and it means so much to us. Thank you. So before I tell you the price, let's look at its styling because if you're watching this video and you're thinking of buying this car, then you've probably got eyes, don't you? Just like the petrol version of the Kona, which has been out for a couple of years, this new electric Kona has looks that some people are either gonna love or not love. I think life is absolutely too short for boring cars and the Kona is anything but boring. Like the petrol version, it has that upside down face with the headlights which are low and the LED running lights which are high. There's that coupe styling with that bit there. The big differences are the wavy back bumper in the Kona Electric, those aerodynamic wheels and its grill or lack of grill. And that's because it doesn't need one. Combustion engines need a giant grill to try and cool themselves down. But electric motors only need a little bit of air and it comes in down here. So what do you do with this bit then? You add this design. Inside the Kona Electric is quite different from the petrol one. This is the top of the range Highlander here and what you notice straight away is the big metallic looking centre console and the big display which is sitting on top of the dash. I'll go through the features in just a sec. Okay, price. How much does it cost? All right, stay with me here. This is the thing. The Hyundai Kona Electric starts at $59,990 and that is for the base grade Elite. That's the list price. There's two grades in the range. The one above it is the Highlander and that's $64,490. I know, that's expensive. I mean, you could get a front wheel drive petrol Kona in the Elite grade for about 30 grand. You could have two of them for the price of that. The Elite Grade has an 8 inch screen with SatNav, there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a digital radio and an Infinity Stereo. There are these paddle shifters which aren't for the gears, I'll, I'll get to that, climate control, leather upholstery, roof rails and LED running lights. The Highlander gets all of that too but adds LED headlights and LED taillights, a sunroof, heated and ventilated front seats, they're both power adjustable too, a heated steering wheel, wireless charging pad and a head up display. Now in the poll that we did, the number one thing that most of you wanted to know about, 40% of you wanted to know about, was what was the range of the Kona Electric on a full charge? How far can you go? I can tell you. Oh, where's he going? Oh right, yes. Pop the bonnet and you'll find the Kona Electric's motor under here. It looks just like a regular combustion engine with that cover on it. But it's actually a permanent synchronous electric motor and it can make 150 kilowatts of power and 395 newton meters of torque. That's a stack of grunt. Enough to get you from 0 to 107.6 seconds. All Kona Electrics are front wheel drive. Lithium iron polymer batteries run along the base of the car here. And to charge them there's a cable here, which you plug in here. That's not plugged in. And then you connect to a wall unit, which you have to buy. What are you doing? An 80% charge using a setup like this normally takes 9.5 hours. Fast chargers, which are for the public, can take only 75 minutes to get to 80% full. Why the 80%? Because the extra 20 can be quite slow. You're still not plugged in. You're not wearing a watch. You're being ridiculous now. So how far can you go in a Hyundai Kona Electric? Well, Hyundai tell us that officially, the Hyundai Kona Electric has a range of 449 kilometers. That is a real world range too. I picked up this car yesterday and I decided to test that as you'll see in this dramatic reenactment. It was around 9am on March 13, 2019, when Richard sat out of Adelaide's Central Business District. He was also wearing his seatbelt. 
It was at the start of this test route for the media that Richard checked the display which told him the battery was fully charged. Actually, that says 98%. As he approached the suburban outskirts of this city of churches, Richard chose a relaxed pace as the winding roads took him towards South Australia's backcountry. This was, after all, about conserving batteries. After 204 kilometres, the batteries were down to 49%, and it was clear 400 plus kilometres was well within range. Knowing that the Kona Electric would probably go the distance, Richard decided to find out what it would take to stop it going the distance. What would it take to kill the Kona Electric? He went on a mission to be the first journalist to make it run out of battery in the fastest possible way, and then Hyundai would have to rescue him with probably a diesel generator to recharge the Kona Electric and give him a world exclusive. He put the climate control on, the seat heaters on, the sport mode on. He accelerated hard, over and over and over and over and over again. Tried not to touch the brakes to prevent them from regenerating power. He even opened and shut the windows continuously. Did it work? But after 298 kilometers, taking five hours and 18 minutes, there was 27% of the battery charge remaining. Enough to get 108 Ks, the computer told him, even driving in the way he had been. He would still reach a total range of more than 400 kilometers. Was this the work of the devil? Incredible. So jokes and a very dramatic reenactment aside, I really did do that. I started off driving normally and after 200 Ks I saw that we'd only used half the battery. And then I did everything I could to try and make the Kona Electric use more power. I wanted to stage a, a worst case scenario test. I kept it in sport mode, I accelerated hard and I kept braking regeneration to a minimum. To get 300 k's with 30% charge left really is incredible. Let's take it for a drive. Turning it on. Get a light, nice little musical tune. Now, when you Put it into drive you've got to use this fancy little shifter control down here and as we drive away we're we're like totally silent we're electric well actually we are but the car makes a whole lot of noises it makes a uh, noise to let people know that you're coming along so if you're driving through a car park you know you don't you don't have to sort of honk your horn to get people out of the way because they cannot hear you if, if you don't have that noise and also if you put it in reverse it does like a polite version of that truck reversing beep beep thing. Bing, bing, bing. It's um, yeah, a very polite version of that. And then as you accelerate away, it goes full Jetsons mode. It does the... And I love that. So the, the pedestrian warning noise sort of cuts out at around about 30 and then you get full Jetsons. Listen. I love it, I love it. It sounds like a hovercraft. It doesn't sound like a hovercraft. Have you heard of hovercraft? Hovercrafts are noisy. They sound like the end of the world. That sounds fully futuristic. I love it. Now, that acceleration is outrageous for a small SUV. You've got all that torque from, from any point. So we'll just stop like this and I'm gonna accelerate. And it's zero to 50 time is just excellent. Here we go. Instant torque right from zero. It's front wheel drive so all that torque is going to the front wheels and there is a bit of torque steer and your steering wheel sort of or more or less becomes like a handle that you hold on to as you take off it's kind of like whoa <laughs> like that. Now these things here these aren't paddle shifters for well for gears anyway. What these are they control how much regenerative braking you can send to the battery from from obviously the brakes. Now if you click it all the way across there using the, the left pedal, you're on like level three, and that's the strongest regenerative braking. And you can take your foot off the accelerating and you can almost come down to a, like look at that, almost a complete stop. If you hold that shifting pedal, you do come to a complete stop. So I've stopped it just using that pedal on the left hand side. Then to move away again, you just accelerate. So basically this turns this car into almost like a, a one pedal car. You don't, you don't actually ever have to touch that brake if you don't want to, the foot brake that is. Uh, you can just hold that pedal and you slow down like that and you're sending charge back to the battery. That's pretty cool too. I like that. It's fun. What else can I tell you about the driving experience? 
handling is is quite good because those batteries lay flat along the the base of the car the center of mass is quite low so when we were doing some windy road driving yesterday it did feel really planted it felt magnetized to the road there is a bit of road noise uh, and that's accentuated by the fact that there's just no engine noise so look i did find the the regular kona quite noisy rolling along the road and i can you know i don't know whether you can hear it now but i can hear the tires rolling on the road quite you know quite prominently now but as i said that's accentuated by the fact that there's no engine noise and everything is from like you know the creaking of the seats to the air conditioning you can hear things in an electric car that are happening in a normal car or a petrol car uh, but are masked by the engine noise the steering is also quite direct it's not su super light it's not heavy but it's just i actually think where it's 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 pretty good. It just it does feel a little bit artificial um, in places and a tiny bit lumpy there, but you're going to find it fine. Now, even the Elite grade, so the entry grade into the Kona Electric range comes with the Smart Sense Safety Pack as standard, and that gives you AEB, gives you blind spot warning, gives you lane keeping assistance, rear cross traffic alert. It's a really comprehensive pack. Standard as well as a reversing camera and rear parking sensors on the Elite. The Highlander, the grade above it, gets all of that, um, but adds front parking sensors as well. Now I'm going to fess up to you, I'm, I'm a petrol head. Um, my own car is a V8 and look, I love petrol. I, I love the way it sounds, I love the idle, I love the acceleration you get out of it, the performance. But if they can make an electric car fast and fun like this, I'm, I'm seriously all for it. And I reckon Hyundai is quite gutsy in bringing this car to, to Australia. Um, you know, this country is not known for the incentives it gives buyers uh, for electric vehicles. And if you can make sure that the electricity that you're putting into the car is renewable, uh, you're getting really close to, to the whole emission-free driving thing. Now I know for only 7% of you, practicality was what you want to know most about the Hyundai Kona Electric. Thank you, Steve, Jessica and Graham with the BMW X1. This one's for you. What's rear legroom like? Squashy. Okay, now the boot, let's take a look. It isn't giant, it's, it's, it's decent though, but the electric version gets about 40 litres less than the petrol. That's where your charging cable goes and you've got storage under there too. So there you have it, the Hyundai Kona Electric. Yes, it is a bit pricey. But that's all changing. The cost of electric vehicles will come down eventually. And for the most part, yes, Australia does produce a lot of its electricity through coal-fired power stations. But that'll change too. If you're charging your car at home, you can choose to do it through renewable sources like solar. This is the future. And it's fast and fun.